In this video, we'll discuss how I made this garage pretty darn airtight. You probably won't find a garage more airtight than this. And th the reason for that is that airtightness is half the battle to energy efficiency. Here's where we are with the garage shop build so far. Uh, this is a 2332nd sheet with tongue and groove. I love this, that this was a big success. When I built the house, I did it 16 inches on center with uh, half inch plywood. And I was surprised how often the joints here between, uh, between studs, the joints would kind of warp. One might go inward, one might come outward. They'd be, um, they wouldn't line up perfect. And so I, I knew I wanted to do a tongue and groove and it came out just beautifully, nice and flat the whole way. Up top, um, you can see that green, that's the tape up there. So I taped before I set the trusses down. All right, uh, you can see the, this is some grace ice and water coming out along the bottom. And the point there is that I'll be able to tape to it. Here's the radiant tubing. You can see the plastic for the vapor barrier. Now this is one of the reasons why I capped the foundation with the Grace Ice and Water Shield so that the vapor barrier is taped. So this is also my air boundary. So the plastic goes directly under the concrete. That's my air boundary. And then my exterior sheathing is going to be my air boundary and it's going to tape to the ice and water on the outside. That way we take this whole sill connection which is just notoriously air leaky. We take it out of the equation altogether. Now here's Elena with the uh, OSB on the lift. As you can see, we're getting them done. Offsetting our joints, just like you would a subfloor or a roof or something like that. I had to build a little rolling base for it because this hoist only extends up to 11 feet 5 inches. Uh, but the ceilings are an actual 12 feet. This is a one inch wide lip. And then up here, this is just a nailer. So if we go on top, you can see the nailer was just scrap. It was just ripped scrap. We didn't do anything special with it. Uh, there's some blocks down there. Again, they're just nailers. I'm gonna swing and then right there, that's the top of the OSB, it's for my air boundary, and then here's the exterior sheathing, also my air boundary. So I've made that connection before I set any trusses. Along the outside, you can see that also very clearly. Now this ceiling board serves two purposes. It's not only the air boundary, but it also supports all the insulation above us. Now this interior sheathing is not taped, as you can see at this joint behind me. It's not taped because this plane is not my air boundary. The exterior sheathing is my air boundary. By having this not be the air boundary and not taped, I went a little bit st step further and I actually screwed all of these interior boards in place. What that provides me is the opportunity in the future to unscrew a board if I need to run a new wire or if I need a hose or whatever might come up in the future that things haven't even been invented yet. I can unscrew a board, run that new thing and screw the board back on and I know that I have not broken my air boundary. So, down here you can see how that air barrier is holding up. Uh, this is the tape that I taped to the sheathing got the tape here and then we have the ice and water shield and it goes up under there don't know if you can see it or not but even though this ice and water shield is not sticking perfectly well to the concrete that doesn't matter because the tape is sticking to it and then it tapes to the sheathing and this is just an example here by the door but this is what we did all the way around Thank you for watching the video, and if you like the video, please subscribe and share it. 
If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I do read all the comments and try to get back to everybody. And if you have something that you'd like me to make a better video about, I'm happy to do that. Thank you.